<sighs> Are we animals? How much of our behavior is just instinctual, and how many of our actions and feelings are actual conscious decisions? By all technicalities, we are just evolved mammals capable of metacognition, but this doesn't mean we have to act on every single impulse that we feel. The one I'd like to focus on is possessiveness, or being territorial. It's in our natural instincts to keep what we gain or create, and we feel totally justified when taking ideas and tweaking them to make them unique. But the moment someone takes one of our ideas that most likely stem from someone else's, we get angry. I feel that this is a problem. This reaction we have to others stealing our work causes stress, hostility, and potential lawsuits. Nobody needs that. It's one thing when someone outright posts another artist's work and claims it as their own, but when someone uses your work as a starting point, or even cutting it up and remixing it, so to speak, it should be an honor. Having your work remade or reimagined means that somebody was inspired by you. You influence someone's creativity the same way someone else had influenced yours. This is how new ideas are developed. Copy, transform, and combine. It's even how we reproduce. Now let's talk about copyright for a moment. Many of you probably cringed at the mentioning of someone copying as a means of creation. Even for me, the first thing that comes to my mind when I hear someone copy someone else's work is just tracing an image or a knockoff brand or something. That's where copyright comes in. The purpose for copyright laws came about to give the inventor a limited period of time where he or she can't be copied in order to cover the cost of the invention. Someone who copies an idea and sells it can do this at a lower price since they don't need to compensate for the cost of an idea and inventing it. Obviously, copyright laws have changed since then. We see knockoff versions of just about everything and everyone sues competitors as a viable business strategy. Images and songs are owned by people who didn't even invent them but reap the benefits of copyright infringement. It's a mess if you ask me. The purpose of a limited time frame for copyrights and patents is to allow the knowledge to be added to the public domain after the inventor has covered their liabilities. This allows for knowledge to be widespread and diverse to help us create and expand our own ideas. A pool of information open to the public and ready for remixing and reimagining. But then, what happens when we talk about information in general? When does something become common knowledge and when can we stop giving credit for it? It's common practice to cite sources in academic papers in order to avoid plagiarism. If we cited everything we've ever learned, it'd be impossibly long, like a family tree that dates back to the dawn of recorded history. Why can't we be as accepting of source citing when remixing music, videos, and images? The same principles apply. In an essay, we form our own thoughts and share the thoughts of others to help support our own ideas and show where or who they came from. When we reimagine artwork, we are using someone else's ideas to inspire our own creativity. It's the exact same principle. But why do we get so defensive? Ideas are made to be shared. One of the fundamental factors that separate humans from primates is our need to share knowledge. Human toddlers will learn and share their information with others, while chimpanzees won't even necessarily copy their own parents. Instead of watching their parents to learn the best way to perform a task, they will go through their own version of trial and error even if they've seen someone attempt the exact same act with success. Human infants, on the other hand, will copy what they see to an absurd extent, performing a task exactly as they observed it even if parts of the act are unnecessary for the task at hand, such as sneezing while opening a box. This compulsory need to copy and share information is theorized to be one of the main factors leading to our evolution. Now, you may notice that I have not, nor will, provide credits for any of the information I've used in this video. I've done this on purpose, to prove the two points I'm trying to make. Number one, people need to relax about the reuse of information, and hopefully those who realize I've quoted them in this video agree with my arguments that I've made. Two, if I paraphrased and reworded the quotes from my sources, it could feasibly be assumed that I've pieced these arguments together myself and all the information has come from the nebulous void of common knowledge. However, my use of direct quotation is, in a sense, a form of citation since direct connections from this video to their original sources can be instantly recognized given the right background information. Paradoxical? Yeah, I think so too. Essentially, people need to become less territorial about their own information. It's a stressful enough world we live in, and trying to control what we can't or shouldn't be controlled only makes life harder. Your ideas can and should make you some money, if that's what you're after. But we also need to learn to let go and accept that nobody's ideas came from a vacuum. We all build off of each other's knowledge, so it's only appropriate to accept modifications and to give credit where credit is due. What it all boils down to is that citations and giving credit is just common courtesy. Sometimes we draw off of so many ideas subconsciously that it's hard or even impossible to remember all of the giants that we have stood on, and to err is human. 
So if you find yourself upon a something or other that has used your work or idea without giving credit to you, first of all, be flattered. Second, calmly explain to them that you would like credit for them using your work. And if you don't cite your own sources or refuse to give credit where credit is due, you're a dick. Thank you for watching.